In this video, we will look at some Excel formulas that we can use to solve problems involving compound interest. So let's go ahead and open up our Excel file. Okay, for compound interest, the future value A of an initial principal investment P with an annual interest rate R compounded M times per year for a total of N periods can be computed using the formula A equals P times the quantity 1 plus r over m, the quantity to the nth power. We'll look through four examples here, uh, each example looking at solving for a different variable in this formula. So first let's look at finding the future value a. So what is the future value of an investment of $5,000 earning 4% annual interest, which is our APR, compounded quarterly for three years. Using the formula above, we would have A equals 5,000 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 4 and that quantity to the 4 times 3 power. In Excel, we can use a formula called FV. It's pretty simple. It's going to take all those amounts and put it into a wizard and it will generate the value for us. So in Excel, let's click on any empty cell. I'll just click on cell G14. And then if you look up at the command line, you'll see this little FX button, and that's an insert function. Uh, click on that, and we'll get this insert function window. And at the top, we can type in the command we want, which in this case, it's FV. And if we hit Enter or Go, uh, in the box below we'll see our command FV and even at the bottom of the wizard we can see what it does it returns the future value of an investment press OK and you'll get the input wizard for this command the first thing we need to input is the rate if you look down at the bottom it says the rate is the interest per period so we need the periodic rate not the annual rate so the annual interest rate is 4% and we have to divide it by 4 quarters, so the actual periodic rate is 0 0.01, which we see over on the right side here. Next is the NPER input, which is the number of periods. We have four quarters times three years, which is a total of 12 periods. You can put the number 12 in there, or you can just put four times three, and it will compute it for you. The third input is the payment. This is a periodic, like a monthly payment, which we are not involved with here in compound interest. So we're just going to leave this as a zero. The fourth input, which is the last one we need, is PV. It's the principal value, or sometimes you may hear it referred to as the present value. The principal value in this case was 5000 When using the Excel formulas, we have to remember that there's sort of a cash flow, money in versus money out. And so when you make this investment, you're actually going to be spending the $5,000. So I'm going to input that as a negative $5,000. So we put our four values in there. We hit OK. And we'll see that in the cell G14, which is where I entered my formula, I have $5,634.13. That is the future value of this $5,000 investment. Next, let's look at computing principal value. Uh, suppose we had a bank that offers 2.97% APR for a standard term CD. How much of a deposit amount would be required for a future value of $8,000 in five years if the interest is compounded monthly? So again, using our compound interest formula, uh, if we plugged all the values in, you'd have 8,000 equals P times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.0297 divided by 12, all of that raised to the 12 times 5 power. Now using Excel, we can use a similar command, but at this time instead of FV, we're looking for PV. So click on an empty cell somewhere, go back up to the function wizard, and instead of FV, search for PV. You know, so we'll get PV in the list below, and down below it tells us it returns the present value of an investment. Press OK. Again, we have four or five inputs we need to put here, uh, and most of these are very similar to the ones we had with FV. We have to do the rate, which was 
percent. Again, that was an annual rate, so we need to divide it by 12 to get the periodic monthly rate. The number of periods, we are doing it monthly, so 12 times 5 years, that's a total of 60 periods. Payment, again, we're not doing uh, an installment payment here, so we're just going to make that 0. And the future value, I want the future value to be worth $8,000. So type $8,000 for the FV value and hit OK. Now if, it, if you see it do these little dollar symbols, that just means that the, the text for that cell is too wide for the actual uh, cell. Uh, so we can make the cell a little wider and show our value. So in this case, if we were to spend $6,897.27 in five years, we will get back $8,000. Next, let's look at finding the APR, or R, in the variable. Suppose $10,000 is invested 10 years ago, and it's now worth $15,000. If the investment was compounded monthly, what was the original APR? Plugging our values into the compound interest formula, we have 15,000 equals 10,000 times the quantity 1 plus R over 12, and all of that is to the 12 times 7 power. Again, we have a similar formula in Excel. So click on a blank cell somewhere, go to the function wizard. And this time we are looking for the APR, so we are going to use the rate command. So search for rate, and we get it there. It returns the interest rate per period of a loan or investment. So hit OK. And again, you'll see a very similar wizard with similar inputs. We need the number of periods, which in this case we're doing it monthly, so 12 times 7 years, which is a total of 84. Payment, we're not doing, so that's a 0. Present value, or the principal value, remember in this case was $10,000, but that's money spent into the account, so that's $10,000. Don't put any commas in there either. Future value is what we want it to be worth after 7 years, and that's $15,000. And hit OK. And we get 0.484 percent. Now be careful, this is not the annual interest rate, this is the, in this sense it was compounded monthly, this is the monthly interest rate. If you wanted the annual interest rate, you'd have to take this value and multiply it by 12. So in Excel, we could maybe go to the, the cell right below, equals, and select the cell where our answer just appeared. So in my case that's G30, and multiply that by 12. If I was doing this quarterly, I'd multiply it by 4. And so we get 5.8% annual interest. Right, the last example is trying to compute the amount of time it takes, or N, in the equation. So suppose we have a bond is purchased for $9,420. And if the bond pays 7.5% APR, compounded monthly, how long until its value is worth $20,000? Again, if we put all of our, our, our values into our compound interest equation, we get 20,000 equals 9,420 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.075 over 12, and all of that is raised to the nth power. Now, in order to actually solve this algebraically, it's going to require using some logarithms, which is certainly possible, uh, but it's actually a lot easier if we do this in Excel. Uh, click on a blank cell somewhere, go into the function wizard again, and we want the number of periods, which you may have seen this already, is NPER. Press go, and so if you look down at the, the hint, it returns the number of periods for an investment based on periodic constant payments. So it returns the number of periods. Press OK. Uh, we have the same inputs again, so the rate in this case was 7.5%. Uh, that's the annual interest rate, so we are compounding this. Let's see, we're compounding this monthly, so we'll need to divide by 12. Uh, the payment we're not dealing with, we're just doing a single investment. Our principal, uh, the principal value, uh, again, this will be negative because we're putting, we're spending it, so to speak, 9,420, and the future value, which is what we want in the end, is $20,000. Press OK, and we get. 120.84. Now remember, this is 
number of periods, and since we're compounding monthly, this is number of months. So if we want it in years, we'd have to take this value and divide it by 12, since we're compounding it monthly. So let's go to the cell below, type in equals, select the cell above that where your answer was, which in my case was G38, and multiply, I'm oh, sorry, divide, divide that by 12, and that will tell us it will take a little over 10 years, about 10.07 years, uh, in order to go from $9,420 up to $20,000.